From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I must say that the first thing on my item that we want to deal with, it's a global headline, is with someone who is recognized and respected around the world, Dr. Billy Graham. He gives a final call for America to repent. We'll talk about that. By the way, Jack Van Impey started with Billy Graham, didn't you, Jack? Chuck Oman and I both were with Billy Graham as musicians, I as an accordionist, Chuck as a trumpeter. We're going to talk about something that Dr. Billy Graham is praying for. Now, he's getting up in years. We'll read about that in a moment, but he's praying to have the largest undertaking in his ministry. Take a look, Billy Graham. Final call for America to repent. Let's just read a little bit of this. Believing God will allow him to live to 95, famed evangelist Billy Graham is making his final call to America to turn to God. Time to coincide with his 95th birthday. Graham is calling people in the United States and Canada to repentance as part of the My Hope with Billy Graham evangelistic outreach set for the date of November 7th, 2013. We are praying this will be a real moment of revival and awakening and transformation across our country. And I love, uh, not only that, but I love this next picture. The future still belongs to America. Now we have some challenges, but Dr. Billy Graham is praying that with this revival, there'll be a turnaround in our country that will have a real revival, Jack. Yes, Rex, and I believe Billy Graham had our president in mind because of what our president has done to him and to his son Franklin, which we'll discuss in a few moments from now. Last week there was late breaking news that the convention of the Democrats said God will not be mentioned. And of course, there was such a backlash they had to do something about it in a hurry. So we did report what was really happening. Secondly, they said Jerusalem will not be the capital of Israel, the Jewish part, permanently because Obama, and I've got this documented, said after the election, I don't want to lose the Jewish vote. I'm going to give Jerusalem to you Palestinians. And of course, we will be talking about the crucifixion of Christians in Egypt by the Brotherhood a little later in the program. Rexella Billy Graham, what a man. He's praying for revival. And I feel that he feels what I feel. We are in real trouble. Second Timothy 3 one says, this snow also the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come to our country. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations will be in distress with perplexity and mass confusion. And man, it's everywhere. And we're inundated with it here in this nation as well. Now, the Bible says horrendous times are coming during the tribulation hour. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, the last for that day is great, so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is Israel, 2 Kings 17, 34. Again, Daniel 12, 1, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Jesus added in Matthew 24, 21, for then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. It's here. Why sin? And we got a bunch of lousy preachers in America, jellyfish without enough backbone to take a chiropractic adjustment who won't mention sin, though it's in this book 613 times. I'm going to say what God tells me to say. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. Lust, when it hath conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Dear Mr. Olstein was asked on one of the shows, the people are complaining because you don't preach about sin. He says, oh, but I do. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. Now, isn't that nice? What a 
It's the name of the sins. I dare you to preach those. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Again, Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, and revellings, and such like, of the which I tell you before us, I've often told you in the past, they which do such sins shall not shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We've got these big mega churches and it's all love, love and little rock bands and lattes and you won't preach a message on sin and hell. I'm still a hellfire preacher because Jesus preached it 23 different times and if my Savior did, I'll preach it also. Oh, God needs a man that'll speak up and thank God for the Billy Graham meetings and all those who came to Christ because this man preached the word, all of it salvation and the brother Jesus and sin. Now, does God want us to repent like Billy says? Yes, repent, Acts 2, 38. It's there dozens of times. In Luke 13, verse 3, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Do you know what it means to perish? To die in your sins. However, as Billy preached so often about the love of God, he said there's a way out. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The trouble is men don't want to repent. It's the tribulation hour in Revelation 9, 21 says, neither repented they of their murders, their drug abuses, their fornication, their sexual sins, and their thefts. It's a world loaded with transgression. They won't repent. And even after the call of love goes forth and one rejects it, what's the final thing that happens? It is appointed unto men once to die, and after death, the judgment. Hebrews 9.27. And that's the first death, but the second death is the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 14, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And all those who rejected Jesus' way of salvation, Matthew 25, 41. Oh, Jack, that was wonderful. We could almost give the invitation right now because I can well remember the day that I accepted the invitation. You know, there's some people out there who are saying right now, Oh, I'm none of those things. But if you are filled with pride, you need the Lord too. Right, Jack? We all oh, need yeah. the Lord. Yeah, I was in we... one of these crusades one time where they believed that you could live without sin anymore. And I said, everyone sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us, First John 1, 10. A guy gets up and says, I haven't sinned in 28 years. Name my sin. I says, yours is pride. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things God truly hates, and that is pride. Well, uh, there's another Graham that I would like for you to take a look at right now, very important, and that is Reverend Franklin Graham. Now, this is uh, Billy Graham's son. Obama gives Islam a free pass. Perhaps, uh, Jack, you would like to tell us exactly what he means by that, a free pass. Franklin Graham loves God, and he's a great evangelist. And he is in charge of Samaritan's Purse that helps people all over the world, and helps Muslims, where he's a heart of love for everybody. But he built a beautiful Bible college and Islamic terrorists flew eight planes overhead and bombed everything to smithereens. And then they go into our churches and destroy Christians, the Coptics of Egypt, the Chaldeans of Iraq, Catholic churches where they went in and killed the priests in front of the people and then hundreds of parishioners. But what really was the terrible thing that happened to Franklin was he was to be in charge of the day of prayer for America. 
and the Pentagon said, you're not allowed to be at the day of prayer speaking or anything else. Why? Because you spoke out against 9-11 when 19 murderous Muslims killed 3,000 people as they flew their planes into the Twin Towers. I'm mad as can be. And that's the Bible. Be angry and sin not. Imagine the Pentagon tells him you can't. And who's the commander in chief? Mr. President. He was behind it. In fact, the Muslims have now admitted in documentary evidence that they did it. And Obama listened. And that was in USA Today. God forgive him. And Obama gives peace a chance with Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. Now, the Obama administration advocates direct dialogue with the organization, though the group has been linked to radical Islam. Now, I do have a question for Jack. What a change. I can't believe my eyes or my ears is what's happened to Egypt and to the Middle East. What are they planning on doing to Israel? They're talking about annihilating Israel. What do you think, Jack? The Wall Street Journal had it right when the big headline said, President Obama is the greatest anti-Semite, anti-Jew president in the history of the United States of America. And as I've already said, he plans to give Jerusalem to the Palestinians exactly what the Brotherhood is doing, and they'll probably discuss it when he's here with our president in the next uh, few weeks. But remember, it's Ahmadinejad of Iran who hates the Jews so much that his goal is the extermination of every Jew. He says, my Messiah, Mahdi, can't come until I kill every Jew first. And then my Messiah, this loving Messiah, will come. What love? You got to kill all the Jews first? Ahmadinejad wants to fulfill Psalm 83, verse 4. Let us cast Israel off from being a nation, that their name be no more in remembrance. And they're going to use all these Muslim nations to try to do it. But I got news for you, Ahmadinejad and Khomeini and Khomeini and um, Muhammad Marsi. Isaiah 56, verse 5, God Almighty in the heavens, Yahweh speaking, saying, I will give Israel an everlasting name. Amen and hallelujah. My Bible says no murderer can enter heaven. Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 22, 15. Now, are you troubled about what Islam plans to do, and we know what they're planning to do globally, 57 Islamic terrorist nations. Well, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, John 14, 1. And here's why. Oh, I love this. Luke 21, verse 9. Hear the words of your Savior. When you hear of wars and commotions, wars and terrorism, wars and revolutionaries, be not frightened. These things must first come before what? When they're happening and they are, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen and they have started, he says, look up, your redemption draws nigh. That's the redemption of our bodies, Romans 8, 23. When he says, come up hither, Revelation 4, 1, and we sweep through the heavenlies in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And then he adds in verse 31, when all these signs are happening in full blast and they're about to happen that way, he adds, no, oh, this is sweet, then is my kingdom that I'm going to set up on earth nigh. And verse 32, the generation that lives to see this shall not pass. We are the rapture generation. Hallelujah. Quit your worrying. Trust in Jesus. How wonderful it is to look forward to the coming of the Lord. You know, I think a few minutes ago when he was naming all those different offenses to the Lord's sins, some of us said, whoa, that's me. Maybe it was even pride or it could have even been murder. We've heard from some inmates who said, you know what? I watched Jack Van Impey open my heart to the Lord. Now I'm ready to meet the Lord. How wonderful to be forgiven of anything. That's why Jesus came if only you're open your heart to him. Anything, Jack, would you pray that wonderful prayer of opening the heart to the Lord Jesus as Savior? Now listen carefully. Jesus shed his precious blood to cleanse you from sin. And 1 John 1, 7 says, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. 
I don't care what you've done it. When you say, Jesus, I'm sorry, cleanse me, save me, wash me, he will. But he goes one step further. Once you've confessed and asked him in your heart, Hebrews 8, 12, their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Forgiven and forgotten. Do it right now, Jesus. I'm coming to you for salvation, trusting in Calvary's shed blood, your blood, Jesus, to save and cleanse me. I receive you this day as my own personal Savior. Come into my heart. Now, in your holy name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. I trust you pray that prayer. Here's my address. I'll send you this little booklet if you did. First Steps in a New Direction. Please write to me. I really pray that you will order this wonderful, wonderful offer. No reason to hide. With everything going on in the world, should we hide ourselves in our homes? Are we afraid to speak out as Christians? Dr. Lutzer wrote a marvelous book. And you need to have this in your home. I really, really mean that. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive no reason to hide. Bob? To order your copy of the No Reason to Hide book with a bonus DVD, Stopping America's Disasters and Decline, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Oh, thank you so very, very much, Bob. And I want to encourage you to right now order this or write to us and we'll be happy to send it to you. You really, really need to have this. And I want to say that with your order, we'll be sending you this DVD. So I trust that you will be making the call. And Dr. Lutzer, again, I want to thank you for coming and for writing this wonderful book, No Reason to Hide. I just want to say, friends, this is a great closing. We Christians must live in the world, but we must not let the world live in us. Look forward to being your home again next week. Till then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much.